Hello, my friends. This is part three and probably the last uh, section in a three-part series on the meaning of 25 vibration and the new insights we've gotten into 25 vibration. And we are going through the people who have the strongest 25 vibe using this analysis that's done in the in the series 4.0 software, going through and pointing out the people who have the most planets conjunct with the smallest orbs in 25 vibe. And the next strongest person, we've discussed at least a half a dozen, and now we're up to John Ehrlichman. In the original study done in 2012, on the first 32 vibrations, he was number one. Now we have a larger database, and there were some other people score even higher, but here he is again, <clears throat> excuse me, still near the top of the list, and he meets all three criteria. Uh, it's AA data, the time is not on a half hour, and we have a lot of biographical information. He did not fit the original idea of 25 vibe very well. He's not a, showing evidence of any kind of unusual creative genius at all. But with the new interpretation, fits much better. So let's get into it with John Ehrlichman. Let's study him from early childhood a little bit. He was an Eagle Scout, recipient of the Distinguished Eagle Scout Award. So he's, you know, a good boy. <laughs> he's, it's like a Boy Scouts and you go up to Eagle Scout and he attends the University of California in Los Angeles only for a year. And then at age 18, when, and it was 1943, he enlists in the Army. Have we heard this before? People enlisting in the Army... Well, it was World War II. A lot of men were enlisting in the army, um, especially men more than women in those days. So it was not unusual. But for the 25 vibe, it's it's e relatively easy. It's If they have any sense of patriotism and any sense of the importance of this for the country, and I think back in the 40s, I would think, I think it's fair to say that was more universal among the citizens. Um, they're not afraid of the danger. I mean, of course, everybody's afraid of danger to some extent, but they're willing to take risks, explore something. It's it's for the war. The war's probably not going to go on forever. It's not a long-term commitment. It's going to be a whole new world of activity, very attractive to 25 Vibe, which loves diversity of experiences. So he does joined the Army. He received a Distinguished Flying Cross as a lead B-17 navigator in the 8th Air Force. So, you know, he was an Eagle Scout. Now he's an excellent navigator. He returns back. Of course, he's not going to stay in the military. 25 Vibe is very disinclined to get into a um, narrow and specialized commitment. So he comes back, he goes back to college, goes to UCLA, he graduates with a BA in political science, and then he goes on and gets a law uh, degree, goes to law school at Stanford, very prestigious university, in 51. So he's had, you know, fairly good variety of experiences here. Is it fresh? Is it... Curious, I think so far he's explored a number of different things. Let's see where he goes from here. Um, one thing to note about him is he's not easily classified politically. He was a recipient of a war medal. He was also a defender of cases involving the environment. So war hero, we think of that as in America as more like conservative or... Um, like mainstream, solid environmentalism, especially back then when it was first being introduced, is not defending the large corporations, the, the, the big industries and the militaries engaged at that level. But he's not doing it for those reasons. He's going into the military because it's an important thing to do. And, and he, it's an adventure. And it's something to experience and to be a part of, to be part of that community. He comes back and he sees the importance of this. Here's a quote 
Um, John was a passionate supporter of preserving the natural environment in the Northwest. Now remember, he grew, he, well, I didn't mention this, he grew up in Tacoma, Washington, so uh, he, he wanted to preserve that natural environment in the Northwest, which is where he practiced law for a period of time. Um, up in, I think it was in the Seattle area, Seattle, Tacoma, that whole Northwest area. Said Bud Crow, I guess you pronounce it, a former law partner and lifelong friend who worked with Mr. Oakman at the White House. He was a camper, a hiker, a fisherman. Have we heard that before? <laughs> camper, hiker, fisherman. 25 vibe. Viewing in this creative flow. So we can think of politicians as people, you know, in buildings all the time, in meetings, very formal, all dressed up. He's 25 vibe. He's not really going to fit that lifestyle of rigid laws and conformity and expectations. He's in a little bit of a funny area. Being an independent lawyer, protecting the environment, yes, that's giving him a lot of um, exploration, a lot of facing new challenges, a lot of life, a lot of freshness to preserve the beauty. So he, it's, it's a, he's in a 25 vibe thing, but going to Washington, D.C. is a little bit odd for a 25 vibe person where you have a lot of meetings, a lot of formality, a lot of places you need to be. Where do you breathe? Where do you have innocence? Um, anyway, he loved it. He felt he had to do what he could to preserve it as best he could. He was one of the first effective environmental lawyers out here. And he's the guy who convinced Nixon to sign some of those laws. We're seeing a lot of his 25 eye here. Now, what we know early for is not nice, sweet things like that. We know him for being convicted of conspiracy to obstruct justice and perjury in the Watergate scandal. Now, a reminder about what the Watergate scandal was. The Watergate scandal was Republicans. If you're not in America, we have the two parties, Democrats and Republicans. This was a scandal by the Republicans where they broke into the Democratic National Committee offices. This is where the Democrats make their plans, choose who's going to run, develop their strategies for campaigns, where the Democrats do their strategizing and planning. They break in to the Democratic National Committee offices and they copy documents. They set up recording devices in order to make the Democrats look bad so that they can win the election. Pretty nasty stuff. And Ehrlichman was involved in this. He was supporting it. He knew what was going on. And he spends 18 months in jail for being involved. After he's released from jail, he's barred from practicing law. So he can't be a lawyer anymore. So he goes back um, and he starts writing novels, including fiction, which is interesting. Uh, you don't think of politicians as writing fiction, but he's, he was an advisor. He wasn't like a senator or he wasn't running campaigns to get elected. He was an, an advisor, an aide, and he does line drawings and sketches. So here we see the 25 vibe love of life, loving fishing, loving the outdoors, loving standing up, protecting the environment, loving going off to DC and advising the president and bringing the environmental movement, something we don't think of John Ehrlichman for. All we hear about him is, you know, that he was a bad guy and when rightfully went to jail kind of feeling. People are more complex than that. And so there's this other side to what's going on. And we talked about getting affected by the wrong crowd. Let, let's re read this last paragraph where, where I talk about this. Like James Brolin, uh, he did not follow a linear path. He served in the military with these different interests, like uh, the artist Ted Wasserman that we talked about in part two of the series. He loved the outdoors and sports. He graduates from law school from a prestigious university. So we see him interested in 
all kinds of levels activities, from fishing to prestigious law school to the military to advising the president in Washington, D.C. We see the delightful diversity, and then he does sketches and line drawings, and I think he does some paintings as well, writes novels. He's alive. He's fresh. He's um, not bound by a, a rigid set of rules. And we see him hanging out with the wrong crowd, that problem, and he contributes to breaking laws. His comments later, when he's asked about Watergate, indicate that he was doing what people in politics do. Um, this is not out of bounds, they're breaking laws all the time. He says really um, negative things about Nixon, that Nixon basically hated hippies and black people and he found ways to undermine them. He got into a war on drugs because the hippies would be involved in it, you know, the marijuana, and then found ways to um, bring down black communities. Can you imagine that? How sick that is. So, uh, Ehrlichman has this freshness, this, this innocence, this unwillingness to play by the rules. 25 Vibe only plays by the rules when the people are fresh, creative, innocent, alive. If they, you're in Washington, D.C. with a lot of rules and regulations and committees and hypocrisy, and that is antithetical to the how 25 Vibe works, and he doesn't work well in Washington. And he breaks the rules and does all kinds of crazy things. He's not remorseful over it. He just leaves, and that 25 Vibe navigates, swims his way out of there to the next stages of his life. So that's the way the 25 Vibe works for him. Let me go over some of the other people. The next the highest person with the scores on Strong 25 Vibe is Emmy Gottsman. She's a German Impressionist and modern painter. We have almost no biography about her, but again, she's in the artist art areas, but we don't know much about her. And then T.J., I don't know if you pronounce it, Tyne or Thine. He's an American actor with very little biography. Um, an American film and television actor, best known for his role as Dr. Jack Hodgins, an entomologist on the medical drama Bones. So Bones was a popular series. Some of you may be familiar with it. Uh, we don't have much information about him. The next person we do have some information about is Robert Gladstein, an American ballet master, choreographer, and assistant director. Now, here's an important point. We've seen this over and over and over again in our research. When we don't have much biography, it may not seem like the person fits the theory because we don't have much biography. And just going by their label, what their profession was or what they're famous for, doesn't reveal what they are like what they're what they're doing, what they are living. Once we have some description, you'll see the engagement in a fresh, curious, creative community. This is what 25 Vibe wants, just wants to be part of a lively, innocent, open community. So Gladstein, let's look at his 25 Vibe before we read this. Um, <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, Gladstein, 25 vibe. He has sun, moon. So there's sun and moon, eight degrees apart. Not super strong, but fairly strong. And moon, Venus, within the same degree. And then Mercury and Saturn. There's that strong Saturn again. We've seen Saturn, Pluto, and Mercury, Saturn very frequently. And there's another um, Jupiter. The Jupiter to Neptune is pretty far away. It's basically... A spreading pattern with Moon and Venus extremely tight, Mercury and Saturn pretty tight. There may be midpoint structures reinforcing this. Like, let's see if the Mercury and Saturn, Mercury is at Moon, Jupiter, Venus, Jupiter. Saturn is also at them, about a degree orb. 
Saturn, Moon, Jupiter, Pluto, but these midpoints will reinforce the configuration. Moon is at Sun, Mercury, and Sun, Saturn fairly tight, especially the Sun, Saturn. So this Moon is in between Sun and Saturn, and what was it in between? Sun and Mercury. So, uh, yeah, and Venus is at the same thing. Let me look at Venus. Uh, oh, Venus is just at the Sun, Saturn. So it's mostly the Moon. My point is these midpoint structures cement these patterns. So even though it spreads a lot, there's, a, there's midpoint structures strengthening it. So, um, again, we see the Saturn, Mercury, Saturn, which is interesting, um, which seems to have something to do with the fact that the Mercury Saturn does not get overpowered, or it does not overpower the vibration. It serves the vibration. It's what are what are the techniques? What are what's important? What do we need to understand to create this creative community? How do we get there? What needs to be done? What's not going to help us? So it's all to serve the 25 vibe interests. Okay, let's go back to the PowerPoint. He was also a board member. We've seen this with other people. Board members of artistic organizations. The same exact thing. This is perfect for 25 vibe. If you see strong 25 vibe like this, being on a board, a committee, being a, it's a way of participating. It's a way of contributing. It's not so much being a leader. It has to do with their long-term commitment to the community. If you are involved day in and day out in supporting the larger community of people in whatever area you're in, in this case ballet, sooner or later someone asks you if you want to serve on a, a board or a committee. He was a member of the dance advisory panel. This may also have to do with that Mercury Saturn. What are we going to do? What are we going to decide? How does this work? So very, very good when you see things like that in 25 Vibe. Advisory panel for the National Endowment for the Arts. That's huge. Um, uh, organization for, for supporting the arts. Over the span of his career, Mr. Gladstein choreographed more than 30 ballets, some of which were televised as special productions on KQED. He also revived the choreography of Lou Christensen, and this is, I'm, I put that in bold because we see the diversity of experiences, the interest in people that are making important contributions. He staged many of his ballets across the country. So like most people with Strong 25 vibe, Robert Gladstone was involved in many ways with a community of creative people. So I put in bold all the different ways that his life was life in happened to be ballet for him. We can look at his seven vibe and other things. We could probably figure out why exactly it's ballet. The 25 vibe doesn't seem to identify the specific activity. It seems to specify the general lifestyle, the engagement, and especially things like director, choreography, choreographer. Amazing. The 25 vibe bringing the community together choreographing, directing, being a fundamentally strong person in the community where people are creative, they're curious, they're exploring, they're not locked into a rigid learning training system where they can't ask questions. This is what 25 Vibe lives for. So the whole life of these people is a 25 Vibration life. This interpretation, 25 Vibe, 25 vibe th this improved, these new insights into the 25 Vibe are fitting with the data, they're fitting with our clients better, and we're seeing that our original interpretation of 25 Vibe, that there's a often a latent, special, innovative creativity, not quite right. It sometimes leads to that, 
that unusual innovation and creativity is just a possible manifestation of being involved in the larger community, and it's not even a necessary one. Because the point of 25 Vibe is simply to engage. Robert Gladstein fulfilled his 20, I don't know if he's, if he's still alive or not, because he is fulfilling his <clears throat> 25 Vibe mission, because he's a part of the community. You don't have to be an innovator. You don't have to do something unusual to be to be expressing the highest potential of 25 vibe. You just need to bring it out, share it, and make a world with it. That's the purpose of 25 vibe. In doing that, you often get these special effects. Okay, we have another example here. LQ Jones, he's the next strongest person with 25 vibe. Let's read a little bit about him. He's an, another actor and director. <laughs> Directors, choreographers, building the community. Not so much because they, they need to tell people what to do, but because they just want to build that community. So directing is one way that they can do it, that they can be involved in keeping that community strong. And, and keeping it alive and fresh and not rigid <clears throat> to inspire all the people to ask questions, to, to do their way, to bring out their style. All part of the five essential quality that creates the five times five of 25. After serving in the US Navy from 1945 to 1946, have we heard this before? <laughs> Why are, is 25 Vibe joining the army during World War II? Because a lot of men did. They knew, they didn't know, but it most likely is there for a short period of time. It's another world. It's an adventure. You're part of a team, to say the least. I mean, you're bonded together to experience this new world and do something that was clearly important. So then he attends Lamar Junior College and Lon Morris College in Jacksonville, Texas, and then he studies law, business. What, he goes, okay. So he's an actor, but he's studying law, business, and journalism at the University of Texas in Austin. This is typical of 25 vibe. They're studying law, they become actors, yes. Perfectly normal <laughs> for 25 vibe. Delightful diversity. Uh, he works as a stand-up comic, Briefly played professional baseball and American football. Look at the range. Oh, my God. It's crazy. I mean, Log, he's an actor, a film director. And to play professional sports, you've got to be really good. So this is, I mean, you remember, um, who was it? Uh, it was called the Renaissance Man. Um was that James Brown, one of the people we studied? Those, all those different interests. Um, again, here we see it because they're alive, they're curious. <clears throat> they don't have to pick one thing. They will, they will try. He tried ranching. I think this is the third person who did ranching. In Nicaragua. Okay. <laughs> He's an American. Ranching in Nicaragua. So this viewing of exploring on large scale... This is the essence of 25 Vibe, getting out there and exploring and visiting these places, engaging on a, uh, on a larger level. That's the thing I really need to emphasize, because it's not just like you find a community, but you get out there and you bring life, ranching, farming. This is life. This is dealing with nature. This is... This is the challenge of real life, not something that's prescribed and set for you. Five Vibe and 25 Vibe especially loves the challenge of an operation, of a group of people facing the natural elements, working with them. And then he turns to acting. Um, after corresponding with Fess Parker, his former college roommate, again, Many of these 25 vibe people get into acting later in life because of the 25 vibe 
delightful diversity and exploring so many things. So there it is, uh, my summary, delightful diversity, striking similarities to others with the brief military sport uh, service, the love of sports, ranching, being an actor, involved in the community as a director. You can't make this stuff up. It's, it's just amazing. He directed, produced, and wrote the screenplay for a, dog, a Boy and His Dog. This is what 25 Vibe does. It can a approach a problem from all those points of view to, to build this world. So the directing, producing, writing, all of that. 25 Vibe is interested in the whole thing from all those perspectives. It does not want to specialize, follow a narrow path in life, and just do that one thing. That's deadly to 25 Vibe. Again, we see the broad range of approaches encompassing the full spectrum of activities. 25 Vibe seems to be so holistic, so wanting to approach something from all points of view that it does not like to specialize. It synthesizes ideas from different sources. So over and over again, we see the themes repeated. And I continued down this list, and I have other people, I have my handwritten notes, or actually in, in, uh, you know, in a word processing program, all my notes I've made for the additional people. I think we've covered enough for you to see how this research fits. We try to build a model where we're not picking the data. There's no cherry picking. And we have the strongest cases. It's a very powerful research method. And we validate it against our clients. It's a problem with consulting a client that drove me back to the data. So one thing we do in vibrational astrology, when we're consulting people, a lot of times my students, they will say, oh, well, that's true because of this, because of this, because of this. But we have strict rules. And when something's not working, we see it's not working. And I could, you know, look to me that what I was telling this particular person about her 25 vibe wasn't, there was something a little bit off. Wasn't quite right. If you're always right, you'll never learn anything new. So we pay close attention. I get so involved when something's not quite right. This, something not working a little bit, sent me off for a week to investigate all this, to clarify it. So it's very important to admit when things don't work perfectly and then do the hard work to sort it out. So vibrational astrology is an evidence-based practice. That means we base our ideas on the best evidence. This detailed research study indicates that the potential for extremely innovative creativity that was first hypothesized to be the essential quality of 25 vibe is only a possible manifestation. It does not occur with the majority of cases of extremely strong 25 vibe. So to summarize, I, this last paragraph is copied and pasted from one of the early slides where at the very beginning of the first video in this three-part series, I describe what 25 Vibe is. Let's repeat that. What is 25 Vibe? He wants to feel the creativity flowing in and around them and in the community of people that they are a part of. Five Vibe, on the other hand, is about personal fluidity curiosity and creativity. 25 Vibe is about a shared fluidity, curiosity and creativity that binds a community of people together. That's what it does. That's what the lives of these very strong 25 Vibe people are all about. The extreme similarity of their activities is stunning. And they're all expressions of that desire to be alive, to be fresh, to be with nature, to be curious, and not to be stuck in a narrow world, a rigid world of too many meetings and requirements. The one fellow, John Ehrlichman, who spent time in a world of meetings and, you know, you're not able to go fishing or doing, you know, this kind of stuff that you want to do or be creative, uh, you know, paint or write a novel. Um, 
didn't work so well for me. I ended up in jail. He, he ended up going outside of the um, requirements for that. He's not built for it. And um, he, he did things that were um, negative, that were dysfunctional and harmful as a result. So any vibration can go right or it can go wrong, but you see how he navigated his life in the end towards things that are that were constructive and meaningful. And he started out doing very important, extremely important work in uh, environmental protection, one of the early people to do that. And without him, some of the regulations to protect the environment wouldn't have been put in place, uh, certainly not that early on. Okay. That's 25 live. I think that's my, yes, that's my last slide. Okay, <laughs> that was very detailed. That's over an hour and a half. But for those of you who want to get in really deep and understand all of, you know, understand very thoroughly how we come to these conclusions and, and how it's developed, there you go, my friends. Thank you very much for listening. God bless. Namaste.